The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees have been announced. And you know what? Not bad, but we've got thoughts on the process and who didn't make it is actually pissing everybody off today. But then we move into my homework assignment for Jason this week and myself. I said, let's create a super group. Five member band. They all must be alive. Lead singer, drums, bass, guitar, rhythm guitar, singer. Find out who we chose. And we'll take a look at a few listener comments and answer some of your questions. Be sure to follow us at Play Pants Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And be sure to smash that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Let's go! It's a good old Play Pants! Okay, welcome in, everybody. Uh... Jason seems exceptionally excited uh, about episode seven today. Am I, am I got, do I have a right read on you right now? You know what? I've been thinking about some of the stuff that we're about to talk about for, for yeah. most of the weekend. There's a, there's a segment coming up after the, we got a first segment, then our second segment. I've been, I've been, I've been working this like it's, it's, it's my thesis and I'm going to Harvard, which I'm not. I like the homework that I gave you. The homework that you gave me, I thought was really difficult. And if we have time at the end of the show, we'll get into it. Uh, Just one quick, and it seems so silly to recap people about my stolen catalytic converters, but I appreciate all of the emails and people that have talked to me about it. And every day since last week, Jason, Mm -hmm. I have received an email of a listener that said, Rod, we got hit last night. There has yet to be a day, and I, it, I'm telling you, it's got to be worse here in Texas than everywhere else. And there's more trucks here, of course. Sure. Um, just if you don't know, I got both of my catalytic converters stolen. My truck, the Tundra, has two of them. So they both got ripped off while my truck was in the parking garage of the radio station. Now, I get there really early. I'm assuming – They've been casing the joint, and they see me rolling in there at 4 o'clock in the morning. They go under the truck. They're in and out in inside of 90 seconds. You know, they sawzall, two bolts, boom, and they're gone. They're out. So these things are about $3,000 a piece. I'm going through the dealership, and I get it. Everybody's handy. I'm sure Jason could get under there, grease monkey, and do it himself too. Totally. Yep. Okay, the dealership's always going to be more, but I got warranties, insurance. I'm, I'm going that whole route. Every day, somebody has sent me an email. Rod, I work here. Rod, guess what? Boom, the buses. Oh, my God, our whole fleet of trucks. Up to and including 12 Tundras on one parking, uh, in one parking lot. In one night, 12 Tundras, their whole fleet. I forgot what they do for uh, a business, but they use Tundras, and they all got jacked. It seemed Insane, like- dude. It seemed like everything that I was reading on online and stuff and in the comment section is like, oh, yeah, as soon as you started talking about it, I knew exactly what happened, right? Yes. And then I talked to other people, other friends are like, yeah, man, I never even heard of that. That's that's the craziest shit I ever heard. Someone's stealing yeah. a, like basically a muffler, but it's full of important metals that are that are worth a lot of money. So that's why you're getting jacked. Yeah. And then I get an email like, hey, dude, give me the make and model. You know, I got a guy. I'm like, your guy is probably the guy that stole my freaking catalytic converter. Don't send me an email that you got a guy. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to hear about anybody with a guy. Okay. Not with this situation because the guy's got the stolen parts. I know. I know. So, uh, again, just a quick update. And then I, th- the sub story to the, the stealing of the catalytic converters, that was the day because I was dealing with all of that during the day. Mm-hmm. That was the drop dead last day to get the mother's day card in the mail. I'm dealing with all of this and the rental car and the dealership and blah, blah, blah on the phone. The card did not get there before Sunday card showed up on Monday, mother's day card. Mm -hmm. So these assholes stole my truck parts and ruined my mom's mother's day. That's it. Mother's day for you, man. That sucks. That's it. Well, let's, let's go. (sighs) <sighs> let's move past your truck situation dude. let's talk about Good. something that's obviously very very important to us and very very in our wheelhouse and it's the rock and roll hall of fame oh uh, big day today big big day it was announced that uh there's a lot of great artists tina turner is going into the rock and roll hall of fame todd rundgren is going in the go-go's are going in and of course the foo fighters are going in first time on the ballot they are obviously a lot could be dave Grohl's second time going into the rock and roll hall of fame Okay, he's went in a few years ago with a, as a drummer for Nirvana. He'll be in it a second time when the Foo Fighters, and the, I believe the induction ceremony goes down October 30th, and they're doing it in Cleveland. 
where the uh, museum is actually at. Right, right. Anytime they announce this thing, right? I All I posted was a picture of all the nominees on my Facebook page, right? And the comments just, they just hammer you right out of the, out of the gate. Oh, it's bullshit. Iron Maiden's not in. And you know, it I is think, bullshit. Okay. It okay. is bullshit. I, I agree. I totally okay. agree. But there's a Don't process. get me fired up right now. I'll quit right out of here. What are we? We're five minutes in. I'm going to quit. Dude, I, people have been saying you quit every every time and we can't <laughs> let that happen. All right. All right. So, so there's a lot go of that goes into the process. And, and, and I think anytime you have to have a conversation about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you need to go to the basics. How does it work? How yeah, but don't do tell it? me you know how it works because nobody knows how it works. Well, Whatever you're about to say, no, those know. assholes behind know. that closed door, I know. I know. nobody knows how the sausage is made. Please tell me. I know, I know. You want to know how I know? I fucking Google it, dude. I Google it. I Google it. Google it. Google it. Okay, That's what I do. go Google. ahead. Give me some criteria. Tell me, please. Oh, right here. Okay, here's the criteria. You can't have a conversation without knowing the rules. Okay, know okay. the rules of the game. Okay, here's. I'm going to run it down real quick. Yeah. How do they come up with the nominees? This is how it's done. There's a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nomination, nominating committee that consists yes. of about 25 people. And the members of that committee are supposed to remain top secret to prevent artists from lobbying them, of course. Now, Fair enough. Each member of the committee gets to nominate two artists for induction. So you get so if, if you're on it, you get two choices. You get two people that you can induct or, or nominate okay. to be inducted. Okay. Bring the total to around 50 artists to be inducted. Then the committee has an open discussion behind closed doors about all those artists, and then they narrow it down to 15 nominees out of 50. That's got to be some wild conversations in that meeting. Okay. Ballots. I'm gonna, I'll, then, I'll, I'll hold all my comments. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm a race car in the red right now. Go I ahead. Know, I know. I know. But that's, you got to go lay out the ground rules first. Okay. So then you get it down to 15 nominees. Then ballots are sent to more than 600 historians, rock historians, that is, members of the music industry and artists, including every living rock hall inductee. And the five performers receiving the most votes become that year's induction class. That's I have a question. how they I've, do it. I have okay? a question. Yes, right. I have a question. Back. Yes. Is it, is it the United States Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Or is it the World Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Can you help me with that, please, Jason? I would say nobody knows. It's nobody the knows. World because they won't answer that. There's all kinds of foreign. There's all. Uh, you look at the the British invasion. The Beatles are in a damn thing. So it's got to be the world. Well, but the Beatles sold 200 million albums in the United States of America. That's true. That's true. We'll get to that. I guess. Is it the Hold World on. Hall of Fame or is it the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for America? They won't answer that question. Well, you know what, in a, in a way to look at it is, you know, when anybody wins the Super Bowl, they always call themselves world champions. And last time I mm -hmm. checked, there's no NFL teams outside of the United States. So that's kind of a weird thing to say. Let me get into the criteria first. Okay. okay. And then we can, we're going to hash this shit out. All right. So that was the, that's how they come up with it. Now, what's the criteria for a band to enter or to get nominated into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? First of all, their first album has to have come out 25 years ago which the yes. Foo Fighters just, just had that happen to them, okay? The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame states that criteria include the influence and significance of the artist's contributions to the development and perpetuation of rock and roll. Okay, I'm, I'm snoozing already. So influence and significance is certainly open to interpretation. And for yes. that matter, so is the phrase rock and roll. Is rock and roll a sound, a look, an attitude, Okay. That's where it's, it's very subjective is the point. There are guidelines, there are rules, but it's subjective. So a guy like you is going to get in a room with another dude with different opinions on different bands. Right. And you're going to hash that shit out like we're about to do now, apparently. I'm okay with, I'm beyond the guy. I'm infuriated on many levels here. Sure. I'm beyond the guy that is mad that, well, Jay-Z's not rock and roll. I'm, I'm past that guy. I'm okay with Jay-Z going in. I predicted Jay-Z goes in his cool. first year of eligibility. I happen to be right on that and the Foo Fighters this year. I don't, I, I don't always get it right when I'm trying to get in these heads of these idiots behind this closed door that don't talk about it, some secret society. Right. So Madonna is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm okay mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, I'm okay absolutely. with it. Absolutely. What happens, what happens, Jason Ginty, in three years... When Britney Spears is eligible, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yes or no? I'm putting you on the spot right now, yes or no? 
And by the way, Christina Aguilera, same year, they came out in the same year. So they will be eligible, I want to say, in 2024. Go ahead. That's a good question, actually, because, you know, Madonna had a lot more weight. I mean, she was a pop artist, but she also broke ground. Did Britney Spears break any real ground other than being yep. a teenage? Yes, she did. You know? Yes, she did. She was much more than that. She was a brand. She was a brand. True. So you she can look at it that way. Sensation. So influenced. I mean, I know it sounds like I'm working for her right now, but if you let Madonna in, I, I'm telling you, I think you got to start taking a look at this. Now, I'll take it one step further. This nobody's talking about. Garth Brooks, go. He should already have been in. Long time. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Sure, no well, doubt he's got to be in some country music Hall of Fame right now. Sure. As, to my knowledge, you know, about as close as you get is probably the Eagles um, and maybe a couple of dudes here and there. But what do you do with Garth Brooks? who's eligible, he's not even being talked about. If you're going to put Madonna in, if you're going to put Jay-Z in, you've clearly told me it's the Music Hall of Fame. Not so much the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and don't be surprised if they change that name down the road. Garth Brooks needs to be in there. He's not my favorite guy. He's a, he's a superstar, okay? He he's crossed over. He crossed over. He's bigger than everybody that's going in, including Tina Turner. He's that big. Huge, huge. Look at the influence so, he had over the 90s. Does he go in? Should, now, why is he not being talked about for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Why are these, these, the, these mystery people you told me about, why isn't somebody standing there saying what I'm saying to you right now? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I think, I think the term rock and roll has to be looked at, though. You've got to think about it. Let's break it down. Let's break it down, Rod. Okay, first of all, should you, you brought up Jay-Z in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I've seen comments. That's just pissing everybody off. Why is Jay Z? Why is LL? Get cool over Jay? it, man. Why? Get well, over you got, it. Look at it this way: the term "rock and roll" is probably the one thing that is the major issue. It's freaking people out because everyone has yes. a different interpretation of what is rock and roll. There's the beginning of the problem because if you think about it, Black Sabbath is heavy metal, a version of rock and roll. The Bee Gees are disco, a version of rock and roll. Ramones are punk. Bob Marley is reggae. They're all in. So those are all different versions of rock and roll. If hip hop and rap, which a lot of people have a big problem with, obviously Gene Simmons is one of them, has a huge problem with these artists going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, if you got a problem with them going in, then you better go and call up the really Red Hot Chili Peppers and get them out. Tell Rage Against the Machine they're not going in and tell Linkin Park they're never going in because that's the thing, the definition rock and roll. You know, where do you think rock and roll came from? It came from the blues of the deep South and country. Over the years, it's all changed. Right? right. It's been melded. How much rap is in modern rock? How many, how many breakdowns of rap music do you hear in a lot of songs today? I mean, it, it, everything is, is so ingrained and influential into another thing. It, the, it's a bit of a mess. The name, the same person that's bitching about Jay-Z going in, which I don't have a problem with. Mm -mm. That person is the same person that talks about MTV. Why do they call it MTV? They don't show any music videos. Same dude. It's the same dude. Yeah, they get hung up on um, little things that don't matter. So you ran through the list. Tina Turner, Carol King, Go-Go's. <laughs> Listen, I'm a Go-Go's fan. I am, okay? Uh, Groundbreaking. Go -Go's. Groundbreaking. Uh, Groundbreaking. Listen, I, all girl band. <laughs> They got how in. many all-girl bands? How many are you going to consider? The Runaways were the first. The Go-Go's were the first. The Ronettes were the first. Enough of this. First. Enough of this. They're getting too much consideration. The Go-Go's got in because they asked for it in their documentary. The documentary coming out last year was perfectly timed. So I like the Go-Go's. Right. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everybody doesn't go in, okay? You're just an all-star. You, 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 you went to the all-star game a couple of times. You sold a bunch of albums. You were on MTV. I don't think it's a Hall of Fame career. Jay-Z, great. Foo Fighters, you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to root totally. for them. Todd Rundgren, he produced. Does he, he's got to get credit for everything, right? So Todd Rundgren, solo artist, Utopia, and all the producing that he did, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like when you look at Trent Reznor. Okay, Nine Inch Nails going in, but you can't tell me that him being involved with Atticus Ross, and I know that he's winning an Oscar as Trent Reznor, but that just builds his brand. And Correct. everybody knows that Nine Inch Nails is Trent Reznor. 
you can't tell me that you you can't you've got to use that stuff that all added to him and i think that all helped plus that he i think he brought in did he bring in the cure or something him agreeing yeah he brought in a lot of this is very political i think he i think he inducted the cure yeah it's Um, all political dude and so for him coming in it's like okay thanks for coming by appreciate you letting the cure in and then you know we'll take care of you when when your time is up my question is when i look at the artists that are going into the rock and roll hall of fame it says like some weird number like 12 or 13 artists are going into the rock and roll hall of fame now i just mentioned one two three four five six with todd rundgren there's something called the Early Influence Award, Kraftwerk, Carly Patton, uh, Jill Scott Heron, Musical Excellence Award. This is the one I had a question about. LL Cool J, Billy Preston, and Randy Rhodes. I understand Randy Rhodes getting some kind of a trophy and being mentioned in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I really think, and we went around and around on this a little bit already uh, on a previous cast, I Randy Rhodes and Eddie Van Halen were neck and neck. Mm-hmm. Eddie over Randy, okay, as far as influential, everything that Eddie touched, boom, he was doing things. It was, but Randy was right there because they came at it from a classical standpoint, and every other guitar player was blues based. So those two guys were neck and neck. I love that Randy Rhodes is in there because he wasn't around long enough. Right. But he would have been Randy Rhodes would have been Eddie Van Halen. Just under Eddie. I think I don't think he ever would have eclipsed Eddie. But LL Cool J has been trying to get in that damn Rock and Roll Hall of Fame forever. He's been nominated eight times. Okay. He can't push through. Are they just giving it to him? Is that a subcategory of being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, him in the Musical Excellence Award? Or is he going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I mean, you're in the building. I don't know if you're in the, you're not, you're not a performer. Being the performer is what you want. I mean, there's, there's other awards. There's producers. I didn't know there were, I didn't know there was other awards. This is the first time I've noticed that I didn't know there were categories to go in. There's producer awards. There's, there's DJ awards. I'm you know like Ellen Freed, Dick Clark are probably in there. And there's, there's I don't show up. If if you're, if what you're telling me is true. And if it is a sub, if his, if LL Cool J's trophy doesn't look exactly the same as Jay-Z's, I don't show up for the award. I don't show up to the, the, the Texas Radio Hall of Fame and they give me, well, you told the best fart jokes. We're going to give you this award and you'll be mentioned in the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. No, no, no. If I don't get into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, I'm not showing up. I don't understand what LL Cool J's trophy looks like and what section he's in. Is he on the same floor as Jay-Z? No, I don't get it. No, no. And, and you know, what's weird is that, you know, and this gets back to the, the, the other conversation we're probably going to run into in a second is that LL <laughs> Cool J was before Jay-Z. You know, Way, he, oh, no, he's, he's been eligible forever. He's been in, nominated. I'm he, not lying. I'm not joking. I'm going to say six times he's been nominated and hasn't been able to push through. I think that's you, you got you got a lot of moving parts. OK, let's look at it that way. There's a lot of moving parts to this whole situation. You got we're missing a big uh, uh, por- uh, por- portion of the situation. It's a TV show on HBO and on HBO Max. How are you going to bring in a diverse audience? Nominate diverse artists. Yes. It's a TV show first. It's an it's a museum piece second. Think about it. HBO is paying a lot of money, I'm sure, to get this done. You got you can't just go Foo Fighters, Iron Maiden, you know, Rage Against the Machine, because then your audience who watches that is going to be Correct. this big. It's going to be tiny. Okay, it's just going to be us. Got to spread that shit out. You're going to okay. have to. You're going to have to bring in Jay-Z. And remember, it's a TV show. So you've already got your rock quotient with the Foo Fighters and Todd Rundgren. And and that seems like there was someone else. Then you got Tina Turner. And then you've got Jay-Z. So you've got a nice mixture for your TV show. Don't get that part of the situation. It's a TV show. And the guy that's sitting at the head of the table right now, his name is John Sykes. And he's like the number three or four guy for iHeartRadio. Correct. These guys, and he was on the ground floor of building. He was one of those dudes with the guy that runs our company. They created MTV. Right. So they know what they're doing. They know how to, you know, get all everybody excited about it and everybody riled up. And they clearly got me riled up. 
I can't even talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame without my blood completely bubbling over. And that's over. why they do it. Why do you think, okay, look, and I'm not behind the glass in this room with these 25 people, right? Iron you better Man. not be, because if you're, if you're sworn to secrecy and if you're on some fucking committee you never told me, I'm telling you, I will punch you in the nuts. I would love, well, now let's not be the hasty like that, because then that's- I'll throw lemons hurt. at your nuts. No, 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 that's for you, buddy. You get, you get the lemon <laughs> treatment, man. Um, Iron Maiden's not in. Judas Priest doesn't go in. So that pisses off all the Jesus metalheads. Christ but, almighty. But why? Why don't they, why don't they let them in? They're okay. both, they're, they're going to get in. First of all, they're going no, to- No, you're going to run out of chances. You're going to run gonna out gonna of chances. I don't know if it works like the Baseball Hall of Fame, but the reason why I asked you, and I did have a reason for asking you, is it a global- Hall of Fame, or is it the United States Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And here's why. Iron Maiden's one of the biggest bands globally. Mm -hmm. And I'll turn it around. Queen was a bigger band globally than they were here in the United States of America. In Sync sold more albums than Queen in the United States. Don't look it up, but I think it's true. I think um, so. Queen was bigger in the world than they were here in the US. It was cool to like Queen, but they weren't, they, they weren't on any kind of level in the United States as a Leonard Skinner or something like that. Um, Iron Maiden still sells out stadiums mm -hmm. around the world. Right. Iron Maiden sells out stadiums. And they play all of the big houses here, meaning they play all of the 18,000 sheds, 18,000 sheds, and they sell out. And they continue to put out new music. They're the one band, them and ACDC will put out new music and people will actually go out and buy their new stuff. Rolling Stones would try to do that for years and nobody bought it. Yes, they would still try to, you know, U2 puts out new music and that stuff's still viable. I mean, Iron Maiden fans will go out and buy it. ACDC fans will go out and buy it. ACDC and Iron Maiden, boom. Iron Maiden over Judas Priest. They should be in first, but also totally. Judas Priest. Um, I was very upset to see Iron Maiden didn't get in. And by the way, don't think that these pricks, they know that Iron Maiden, they, they talked about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame like they don't care. And as a matter of fact, I don't think they would show up. So if they don't think, and now I'm going back to what you said, they got to produce a television show here. Mm -hmm. Why waste a spot if you think you're going to put a band in and they're not going to show up? Exactly. That's, and I really think that Iron Maiden would just say, you know what, piss off. I'm not, we should have been in 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And, and the most rabid fans of any musical genre outside of Taylor Swift that you're going to find is heavy metal. Those are your most rabid, most vocal online fans. Those are the ones. So that's why they snub these bands as well. You got the TV portion of it. And then you've got the whole, hey, we can wait another year. Everyone's going to go ape shit, bitching online, rock and roll hall of fame, rock and roll hall of fame. And you're getting your name in lights everywhere. You got to look at it as this. Is Iron Maiden going to go in? I would assume they will eventually. Same thing with Judas Priest. Here's what I always tell people. Before I die, Jason, before well, I, I would, die, I would, well, start will it eating, happen? Eat your vegetables and don't drive around with no catalytic converter on your damn truck. You'd be all right. Okay, but put them in while they're all here. Shame on you, Rock and Roll yes. Hall of Fame. Everybody from Motorhead in the original lineup is dead. Okay, should have, been, should have been in already. You're right. I really think Motorhead again did not sell any, didn't sell half, maybe sold a quarter of the albums of Iron Maiden. Okay, but influential. If you're telling me that that is a huge criteria, shame on you that Phil the Animal Taylor, Fast Eddie Clark, and most importantly, Lemmy are all dead. Right. No, this didn't, part of the problem. Put him in, well, at least Lemmy was alive. So. If somebody's going to die in Iron Maiden and you got blood on your hands, 25 people behind the door. It all boils down to the contributions to the development and perpetuation of rock and roll. Album sales technically doesn't get factored in. Okay. It doesn't. Charts. It has singles, to. None of, they say it doesn't. I don't know if it does or doesn't, but. Well, I mean, about, maybe that's how you keep sync out. You know, maybe that's not, how you keep. Right. You know, I mean, I, okay. I, I want to do this afterwards. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to throw you some bands. 
And yeah. I want you to tell me, and this is just your opinion. Sure. So I, I'm, a, I'm letting, I'm going to let you, you're going to be the guy in the back room and I'm going to throw some bands at you. And you're going to tell me if they go in the rock hall. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Yeah, this is great. All right, let me talk about one of our great sponsors here. Uh, Pirates of the quarter. I keep getting asked, man. I had, I had a group of friends that were in new Orleans two weeks ago. They took the tour. Uh, I just fielded a, a text message from another friend of mine that's coming in to New Orleans Memorial Day weekend, wanted to know what was going on. And of course, I always send them over to piratesofthequarter.com. Yeah. All right, at Pirates of the Quarter. So it's a five-star rated, it's a walking tour, and it tells the tale of smuggling, sword fights, cannons, rum. It's the most unique walking tour in all of the French Quarter. There's a lot of them. And I don't like to put other ones down. I'm a big fan of anybody and anyone that's trying to, you know, keep New Orleans spinning. But this, these are facts. These guys know the history. It's fun. You're going to learn stuff. You're going to still party balls. You're going to have a great time. It goes hand in hand with your partying. You're going to walk around. You're going to want to revisit these spots. You're going to want to tell everybody about it. So it's fun. You learn a bunch. Discover the pirate history of New Orleans. It's very rich in pirate real history, okay? Piratesofthequarter.com. Links on the Plate Pants podcast page and on our YouTube page. Rod, you know, a lot of people get upset, like, like you know, oh, well, Foo Fighters and before Iron Maiden, that's bullshit. Okay, you got to think of it this way. At the end of the day, the Rock mm -hmm. and Roll Hall of Fame uh, is a museum, okay? And we're watching it unfold in real time, okay? So when you go to visit the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, guess what you're going to do? You're going to go see the bands you like. You're not going to go see the ones you don't. No one is going to the Louvre and going, I'm all pissed off because the Venus de Milo got put in before the Mona Lisa. You know what I mean? It, eventually they're all going to get in if they deserve to be in there. So we're dedic we've dedicated almost a half an hour already to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's why they do these lists. Anytime you get into a list situation, especially about music where there's passion involved in it because it's your music, right. man. So they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. We're doing a podcast about it right now. So the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the last couple of years, if it pains me to say something good about them <laughs> but they did some things right they went in and did a little cleanup because they really were screwing rock over for a long time mm -hmm. rush rush should have went in 15 years before they did all right they you know thought kiss was a kitty band you know and they didn't get any credit that you know the, whoever these highfalutin assholes are you know for some reason they were wearing you know they're probably in there wearing craft work craft work t-shirts um they weren't they didn't have kiss you know so they cleaned up and they got bad company or i'm sorry they got uh, deep purple in there and they got rush and you know some bands that we had been like pounding on our chest for a long long time uh bad company just slipped out of my mouth is bad company now listen it's not the really really good hall of fame and, you know, not every baseball player can make it in. Not every football player can make it in. It's not the super awesome. It's not my favorite band fame. It's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Does Bad Company go in? That's a borderline one, I think, because they put out a, a bunch of good albums. Did they uh, contribute did they to the development and perpetuation of rock and roll? Yes, they did. Because how many people started to sing like Paul Rogers? Yep. I mean, he's... Told, everyone says he's one of the greatest of all time. So that's got to be a factor in there. It's borderline for me. I, yeah. I, I'm not going to lose any sleep if they never make it in. Uh, Soundgarden. Yes. Soundgarden goes in. Soundgarden goes in. I think you've got to factor in, which sucks, is Chris Cornell's death. I mean, think you, you and I it hate all it because it perpetuates the band. It all moves the ball down the field. Moves the rock and roll thing forward. I think Soundgarden has to get in. They absolutely have to get in. Do, do these assholes that I think you might be one of them? Mm -mm. They're in this room. Listen, we gave them Nirvana and we gave them Pearl Jam. That's enough. Mm -mm. Does Soundgarden and Alice in Chains suffer because that sound is already in there? I'm, I'm trying to think like these people. You said yes to Soundgarden. I agree with you. Allison Chains. I think they should. Um, I don't, I really think they should. And I'm, I'm, it's not about being a fan of the band. You gotta, you gotta peel that away. You can't be a champion, right. a fan of it. You gotta think of it from their side. I think, I think Allison Chains will go in 
later down the road, but I think they'll get in because they were part of that grunge movement. You have to look at that as a whole. Without Els and James, I mean, man in the box. That's why I wonder, okay, but that sound is already represented. The the Seattle movement, that boom, grunge, alternative, it, it it's represented. It's the big four, though. After that, I think you're done, obviously. But going back to your point, Rod, you said, you know, you, all these old pricks and all these guys in their suits and whatever they are, these dumbasses. Who are in, they? I want, well, I want names. Next week, I want names. Think about it this way. These guys are a bunch. They are. They're the boys club from the 80s and 90s, okay? Guess what? Yeah. They're dying off. Who's going into the committees now? Younger guys. Gen X is going in there. So, yeah, it's going to evolve. It's going to change. Let me That's in. a good thing. That's a good Let me thing. In. So... There's the flannel four. You and I agree. Yeah, they got to go in. You could say flannel five. I do kind of sometimes allow STP into that group. Stone Temple Pilots, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I would hope so. I would really, really hope so. Because think about Wyland, his front man moves. They had, a, you know, and again, it's not about the hits. It's not about the album sales. Did they perpetuate and move rock and roll forward? I think they did. I think they did. I think you're, I then you're, you're really, you know, then, but you look at, you look at Stone Temple Pilots, and you, do you look at Bush then, you know, a band like Bush? Bush and Stone Temple Pilots, they kind of did their whole thing back and forth. They were out the same time period. They both As soon as you stuff. said Bush, and I like Bush, and I love Gavin, he's the coolest dude. Greatest he dude really ever. is. Yeah. He's, he's a super nice guy. As soon as you said, if you're putting Bush on that level, then boom, not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They're not. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. They're, They're not. absolutely not. But Stone Temple Pilots, I mean, you can you <sighs> can start looking. That, that's the problem is you start saying one band, you got to think of the 50 other that goes Correct. with them. All right. 2022, Eminem. Yeah, you put him in. He's totally. a lock, right? Dead first shot in on it. Boom. Think of the TV. Think of the TV show. And think about his influence. million albums worldwide, okay? Yep. No, he um, goes in. He totally goes in. Okay. Nickelback. No. Not for a while. Because they're pricks, right? And people can't get over the memes. They can't get over... The Chad Kroger, the photograph, the memes. They right. can't get over it. 50 million albums. It's you just told me one. albums don't matter. They don't matter. They're not influential. Nickelback, huge band, sold more albums than STP. Nickelback sold more albums than AIC. Mm -hmm. They probably sold more albums than Soundgarden. Oh, yeah. Um, I know you told me get off the album sales thing. Right. It's not part of the criteria. Nickelback, no? My... If they do, it'll be years from now. It'll okay. be a while. I think I think they don't go in for a long time. Uh, quickly, twenty twenty three Creed. No, you don't put no Nickelback way. In. You're not putting Creed in. Creed has sold more albums than Nickelback, I believe. If I rec if I remember no, looking that other up, way around. Oh, is it the way around? Way around. Okay. Yeah. Pretty close. They sold a lot. They sold a shit ton. Yeah. No, no Creed. Sorry. Uh, I, you know, I I'm gonna say probably yes. Twenty twenty three Missy Elliott. I I, I don't know. Hey, I don't know. I can see that going. Okay, yeah, great. Destiny's Child? Mm, no, Beyonce will go in, though. Okay. Beyonce's going. Uh, you know Beyonce. 2020, 2023, Limp Biscuit. No, no, absolutely not. Do they get nominated? Does anybody even have the balls to nominate a Limp Biscuit, or is there just too much hatred for Fred Durst? I think I think he's a goofball. Yeah, but as time goes by, you start to some of that fall. History has a neat way of smoothing out the rough edges, man. Lit, okay. uh, Limp Biscuit, no, but you know, you look at a band like Linkin Park. Linkin Park goes in. Okay, Linkin but, Park goes in. But you know where I'm going to go with this? That rap, rock slash new metal. That was separate from grunge. That's a different thing. That's the next wave. Role. Yep, hold it. That's role. the next wave. Limp Biscuit. I would say, if you wanted to say the big three for me, Limp Bizkit, Corn, Linkin Park, New Metal. Yeah, I think I think Linkin Park is a shoe in. I really do. Limp Bizkit. Well, Linkin Park won't be eligible for 2026. Um, and a lot of the old guys will be I, dead I, by then in the in the nominating committee. Think about it. You're gonna age out a bunch okay. of old dudes, so it's gonna you know that's what you gotta look at too. Uh, 2023 Puff Daddy, I think, is a lock. Yeah, he's a lock. Although he's done anything. P Diddy, Puff days. Daddy. Okay, so. I don't think you ever gave me an answer. 2024, Britney Spears. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Say it again. Rock 
and roll. Contributions to the development and perpetuation of rock and roll. If you've got a lot of other pop artists from the 60s, from the 70s, from the 80s, Madonna to be mm-hmm. included, I think I think she has to go in. And she's the big one. She's the one. It, you know, Christine she's Aguilera is much minor uh, compared yeah, to Britney. I don't, I, I don't think the brand of Christina Aguilera was – the branding wasn't the same as Britney. The 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 mega the megalomania wasn't right. quite the same. Um, even though it wasn't in our format, we lived through that of Britney, you know, being introduced, and it was it was it was on a Michael Jackson level. Britney yeah, Spears, absolutely. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then you know, and we're in Louisiana at the time when all this is going on. So, um, twenty twenty four white stripes. I think their influence in what Jack Jack White has done. People love Jack White forever. Critic critics darling, um, and he continues to produce. You know, he's not selling millions of albums, but again, it's not about selling the albums. It's all about moving the rock and roll idea, the attitude mm. forward. That's what it's about. So they should. I think. Away. I think. I think the White Stripes probably. That's that's like um, they would go in much much later. I believe. All right. Uh, Lincoln Park 2026, we agree. So two other names you you said one already. Taylor Swift, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Eventually. It's got to be a yes. It's, it's got to be a slam yeah. dunk. Yeah, she's right? the first year. First year. Think about what she's done. Yes. Think about she's, you know, and she's, she's her own animal. She's living on an island. Britney Spears lived on an island. Okay, she lived on an island. Think about it. Britney Spears was, Michael Jackson was on an island. Britney Spears Island. Taylor Swift is on her own island. Now she's not dancing around and all that shit, but she is writing her own songs and she continues. She's very prolific and she continues to do it again and again and again. And I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Britney? No, uh, uh, Taylor Swift. Taylor Taylor Swift, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't believe we're sitting here talking about Taylor Swift. But yeah, yeah, I think she gets in. If you're not following Britney Spears on Instagram, you're doing yourself a disservice. I want you to follow us on Instagram at Play Pants Pod. Nice. But Britney, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, I love her, man. She's the best. So I look at my outfit today. It's Tiger's Rar. And I'm like, oh, God. Somebody lock the door. Do not let her out of the house. Jesus. All right. Uh, Have we run the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to the gamut? Anything Um, else that you want to add about it? We're going to get tons of shit about this. I guarantee it. But you know what? It's, It's at the end of the day. If you're going to go to the museum, you're going to go see your bands that you love. And you're going to walk, you go to any museum, you're going to like, you're going to go see the shit you want to see and blow by other, other stuff. So it's the same thing with this. It's just that music draws out your passions. You know, I've saw the comments online today. Fucking Iron Maiden's not as bullshit. Okay. That is um, bullshit. Don't eventually get me Eventually they're going to get in and that's going to be okay. It's a you can't museum. guarantee that. That's it, the problem. It, they will. They will. They will. Right. We got to uh, take a quick little time out here, but, uh, you you sent me something very very cool and I'm so excited about going over this and I, I'm I'm curious to see what you came up with because oh my um, homework assignment for you the 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 term super group is like a, a musical thing where you think of like Temple of the Dog you think of Cream you think of the Traveling Wilburys it's a bunch of artists from other bands that get together Temple of the Dog is a great example although they were more of a group and then they became famous um, a bunch of artists get together and put out an album or two or three, okay? So uh, Rod said, hey, why don't we make up our ultimate super groups? And they, members had to be alive. We're gonna do that in just a second. First of all, man, uh, baseball heating up, Astros are rocking, uh, basketball I think is about over uh, for the, the, the Rockets. But either way, if you wanna go watch some damn games and uh, hang out, have some nice cold beers, Lucky's Pub West, I-10, and Barker's Cypress. They got the Rockets games, the Astros baseball, 40 TVs in the place. That's 40 TVs, amazing food. Look, they got the best pizza on the best side, killer wings, burgers, and their famous Philly cheesesteak egg rolls. And they're doing crawfish on the weekends. I can't tell you, I got a neighbor, I swear to God, he's a dick. You wanna know why he's a dick, Rod? Because he's boiling crawfish every weekend. And and you, you know how you smell it a mile away? Never once has said, hey, Ginty, why don't you cruise over and have some crawfish? No, he's oh, not doing it. Dick. Yeah, he's a dick. Anyway, um, you know who's not dicks? The guys over at Lucky's. They're doing crawfish every <laughs> single weekend. You just got to check out the Facebook page for all the details. There, I, You know, there's great combinations of life. There's peanut butter jelly. There's uh, chocolate chip cookies. 
And then there is an ice cold beer and crawfish. You can't beat that combo, especially when you're hanging out with a bunch of people, having fun, always an ice cold beer at a fair price. Lucky's Pub West, I-10 at Barker Cypress. So I sent you this. It was a weird way to get to where I wanted to go. (laughs) It usually is, man. (laughs) So I I found this, I, you know, it's a super group. It is. So it was a song and I don't, I never even really liked the song that much. If if you're familiar, Steve Miller band, the song Abracadabra. Well, there's a bunch of musicians that got together and they recorded the song and I looked at it and then, you know, it caught my eye. I wanted to go and listen to it. And I don't shit on that guy that sings for journey. He really does have a great voice, man. Steve Perry just cannot pull that off. So this Arnell guy is great. I have, one of my close friends here, it, it's so, I just, I could never bring myself to say that I love Journey. I've, I've never said it out loud because I don't like them. No. Uh, I don't love them. He loves Journey. It's weird when a dude is super into Journey and he says this Arnell guy is the real deal. He says he's amazing live. Mm-hmm. So you've got the, the current lead singer of Journey. You got Billy Sheehan, who Jason and I, we know from Buffalo days. Hell um, but, you know, he's the Eddie Van Halen on the bass guitar, you know, and he played for Talis. Nobody knows, but he played for Mr. Big. And before that, when David Lee Roth went solo, he could have had any bass player in the world. And he chose Billy Sheehan. Right. So Billy Sheehan's on bass. Joel Holks- Holkstra is um, a-, a white snake guy. So yeah. he's this wicked and well-known guitar player. And they, I just saw that there was like, it was like a mini super group just for the one song. And I, and I thought this would be a cool exercise. And I sent it to Jason. I said, it's a long way to get here, but what if we each were to build our own super group? My only criteria is they have to be alive. So you can't get Freddie Mercury in your band. Right. Maybe down the road someday we do some fantasy thing, you know, uh, they don't have to be here. Cause I would have probably chosen Dio. Um, your members of your band have to be alive, Jason. That's, so uh, you said you you spent more time on this than you wanted to admit. Yeah, because I got I got I got thinking about it. Right? I I've never more, done this before either. I've never done this exercise. I spent more time on this than I did on my damn radio show today. <laughs> 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 I was more excited about this because it's it's so wide open, and that's where it gets you into trouble. You start just thinking, right? And you're like, "Whoa, who would be my singer?" Who would be my bass player? Who would be this? And why would I want that? Do, it, 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 there's no right or wrong answer to this, obviously. It's, it's, it's your personal super group. You said five members. Five members. And the only thing that I allowed wiggle room was if you didn't, you could have a lead guitarist and you could have a rhythm guitar player. If you didn't want a rhythm guitar player and you really were just had a boner for keys, you could get a keyboard player in there. So if you wanted Bon Jovi's keyboard player, but I think John Lord is still alive from uh-huh. Deep Purple. Um, I don't know if your boy Robbie Krieger's around. No, he was a guitar player. Guitar Ray player. Manzarek, is Ray's he still dead. alive? Yeah. No, he died a few years ago. Okay, see, I don't know, but I knew that you would know that. Um, yeah. If you really just were so jacked about getting keys in your band, uh, I said you could have a keyboard player or a rhythm guitar player. I like it. I but, did. But a five-member band. Five so how do you want to do this? How do you want to how do you want to present it? Do you want to go back and forth on instruments? Do you want to do your whole band? And then I do my band. Any way that you want to present it, I you the one that I gave you the homework. You tell us, you tell me how you want to um reveal. I wish homework was like this in school, man. I'd have stayed in school a lot longer because this is the cool shit right here, man. This is what it's all about. <laughs> design your I'm glad own you liked it. Design your own super group, man. I lied a, dude. I woke up last night. <laughs> I scratched out some dudes like that's how much I've been thinking about this. And I've I've been wanting to change it all day. And I'm like, okay, I got to I got to end on a band. Okay, now my criteria for my band, I'll go first. And I'm just going to run through my whole band. And then you can shoot shit all around it and and beat it up because it's I can tell you how stupid your choices are. Yeah, please. I can't wait to hear it. I'm coming to this super group thing from I want to build a super group and I want a band that's going to obviously produce a hit because the only reason to do a super group is get a hit on the radio so that we know about your stupid band. Mm-hmm. You need a hit. So you got to have, I guess like, I wasn't hit. really thinking about that, but go ahead. Interesting. That's it. And a, then this I is want all a, good takes. I want a band that I can listen to. That's going to have some great freaking songs. It may not be radio hits and that's okay. I want them to be able to stretch their legs a little bit. Maybe put a little like seven, eight, nine minute jam on there. 
get, okay. get out there. And I'm not looking just for a rock straight up beach, beach over the head band. For me, I want something that I can listen to and be like, whoa, I want layers. I want layers. Okay. okay. All right. That being said, I also, I also looked at this. If I'm putting this super group together, like these are guys I'm going to be hanging out with too. Cause I put the band together. So like, I'm going to get to hang with all of these. So I picked people that I want to hang out with too. Oh shit. This is really good then. Wow. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You get to be all like right. a roadie for a day and shit. Yeah. All um, right. So I say save the singer for last and yeah. then you can go ahead and you could talk about how just, just how replaceable we are. You could start with the drummer. Actually, I'm going to wait on the drummer because my drummer is very interesting. I'm going to start with a okay. bass. I'm going to start with a bass player because you need that foundation, right? And you know what? I'm going easy on this one, but I'm going to tell you why I picked this person to play okay, bass go ahead. in my super group. His name is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Ooh, that's a good one. It's an obvious choice, though. It's, it's obvious. But you got to think about the funk that He's Flea brings. Great. He's you so think, great. But think about it. He plays the trumpet. Okay. Now look, I'm uh, I might be cheating the edges a little bit here. I'm looking for guys who can play a lot of instruments in my band. What are you gonna do? Cake covers? Yeah, we're gonna do the distance <laughs> just for fun. No, no, these are musicians <laughs> in this band, dude. We got musicians in this band. Uh, Flea, and think Damn about man, his pedigree. That's a good one, dude. Think about what he can lay down. Okay, you need a solid rock, kick-ass bottom to your band. <sighs> so Flea's really it. Okay, and that one seems kind of obvious. Okay. Then I'm going to go because I didn't pick them. Yeah. Then check this out. You want a rhythm section? This one's going to blow your mind. And you're never, you know, if you guessed a thousand times, you wouldn't get this. You know what I want my drummer to be? I'm going to blow your mind, dude. I'm going to blow your fucking mind right now. Me? Me? The drummer is, no, Jesus Christ. Me? Oh my God, dude. You were setting me up. I thought you were picking me for the super group. No, you, you know who I want? Okay. You're my second choice. All right. Thanks. I want Quest Love as my drummer. Quest Love, okay, you know him my mind a little bit. from the Tonight Show band, right? The funk, the streets of Philadelphia sound. He runs the Tonight Show band and he can keep the group on point because he deals with a lot of musicians. He also raps. He's got the turntables down. He's multi-instrumentalist. You see what I'm doing now? Listen right. to that. Listen to that rhythm section right now in your head. It's, it's crushing you. I don't hate that rhythm section at all. That rhythm section is badass. It's badass. I, even I was like, I'm like, Ooh, this is pretty cool. I want to hear this band. All right. I'm going to go to my lead guitar player. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to dance right. around on you a little bit. And this one's going to probably get me in trouble, but I don't care because it's my damn group. And I want to see these With guys. Your, it's, this is uh, super Jason. I, ooh, that's a good name for the band. That's no, a terrible name. Um, my guitar player is Matt Bellamy from Muse. Wait before you punch me through the screen. I'm not. Matt, I'm not. I'm not. Matt be Bellamy mad. from Muse. That dude can play the fucking guitar. I don't care what anybody says. You go listen to those Muse albums. He can play the guitar. He can play the piano. He can sing his balls off. Oops, but he's not my singer. Um, he's a good producer. He's he's experimental. Experimental in there as well, right? He's got the computer Out of shit every going guitar on. player yep. that yep. is still breathing, building a band. Matt Bellamy. Now, um, hang on a second. Where is now? I, I get. I know that you under you appreciate the musicianship, right? Is Muse in a top twenty band list for you right now of current bands? Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah, I love that band. I freaking you love do. Muse. I, yeah, no, I think I, I don't know this. I'm, why am I doing this? I don't know you. He can play. I don't the know guitar. Who, who am I talking to? I know Muse is a great band. They got some guitar shit in there. He plays the piano. He sings. He's all that shit. So, I'm um, think about it. It's a band, okay? You can have a shredder guitar, but then they're gonna write good songs. Probably not. If right, I no. didn't see Muse live, I would give you a little bit more shit. They're so. But I good. but I've seen them live, so and good. Muse is a force. And it's three guys, and and Matt Bellamy is just ridiculous he, he is he's that's why i threw him in there and i had a couple of different ones that uh, had, the guitar was tough all right so and then i'm gonna go with my singer i'm gonna leave the, my best for last Are you my, saving your rhythm guitar player for last i'm i'm saving my position my my, my, oh, my position maybe it's a key, oh, maybe, okay if, if you bust out a key guitar player i'm gonna punch you yeah the guy from flock of seagulls <laughs> um, my singer's gonna be eddie vetter how do you not go with eddie vetter hmm. amazing lyrics the baritone I want a guy who can write lyrics. I don't want some shredder talking about his love gun and his dick. You know what I mean? I want Eddie Vedder. But then think about this. There's no rules. It's your super group, right? Matt Bellamy yes. can sing as well. 
think about the Temple of Dog options you got there, two different vocalists going in these songs. I'm looking at options. Okay, I'm looking at options in my band. Eddie Vetter is your singer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And then to hold this all together. Yeah, what this is, is this mystery member here? The cowbell? If I'm telling you, if you have Will Ferrell in your band with the cowbell. Dude, and, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this all up in a second. When I tell you who this person is, you're gonna be like, oh fuck. John Paul Jones is my keyboard player. You're going with the keys. John Paul Jones is a keyboard player. He's an arranger. He's a producer. He's multi-instrumentalist. You see what I'm doing here? I brought in the elder statesman to keep this fucking mess calm, workable, usable. Look this at this band. This band is a mess. This band is amazing. This think band of, is a mess. Think of the possibilities of this band. It's beautiful. It's absolutely I, right. I am not seeing all of these guys working together. I'm no. just not seeing it. You cannot work about eagle uh, egos and shit like that. That's a whole nother. I mean, that's why I bring in John Paul Jones because he's a guy who's just mellow and he's worked with Robert Plant and Jimmy Page. That's a lot of ego in one room. So, I mean, that's why I kind of brought, I got elder statesmen in this band. These are not a bunch of young dudes, okay? These guys have what all you been just, there. What you just tried to do was like these basketball dream teams they put together. Nobody passes. I don't see these guys working well together. Probably not. Probably not. But I would, right. That's why like, I brought in Fleet. And that's why, why Quest Love makes sense because he's worked with so many artists every on a nightly basis. He puts them together and does all the music. So that right. was my thought process behind that. All right, you said Flea. I'm going to start with my bass player. Yeah, let's do it. Robert Trujillo is my bass player. He's awesome. This He's so guy, great. This guy. Now, you all know him. He's the bass player, and he's been the bass player for a long time in Metallica. Yeah. This guy, there is a bass player. And some will say Billy Sheehan may be the greatest bass player of all time. Oh, you'd be silly to say that, okay? Jaco Pistorius is probably the greatest bass player of all time. My man, Robert Trujillo, has a Jaco Pistorius bass, and he can play note for note. His idol is Jaco Pistorius. Yeah, no, Robert's Robert great. Trujillo, nobody. And your boy Flea is so great. I love your, po I love your pick. Your best pick, your, your MVP is Flea on your band. Robert Trujillo looks so cool on stage. He's creeping around. He's monster. slithering around. He's like a monster. Yeah, that's great. He's so awesome. And I go back with this guy back to, I think, when we talked about us doing our metal show together. Didn't we play the Infectious Grooves? Absolutely. They're so great, too, man. They're so great. And that was him. Yeah. And yeah. that was him. And he had that soul cal. And he oh, really is. He's, he's my favorite bass player. I, I, I love him. And I think he's so talented. And I don't know if you've seen his kid. His kid's a carbon copy of him, yeah, man. It's, yeah, his kid's scary. great, too. That's good. That's a good okay. pick. I like that one. I like that a lot. Yeah, shit. All right. I, him and Flea, man, those two guys, I, I couldn't tell you who's a better bass player. I really couldn't. They, they really would just, in the same room, the room would explode. Yeah, it'd be great. Um, my rhythm guitar player. Now, I could have just gone out and got another lead guy. Okay, I, I'll give you an example. Like, I could have put Slash in my band, okay? Oh, and I'm yeah. sure Slash would be a great rhythm guitar player, but I would never ask that of Slash. Mm -hmm. I would never ask him, I need you to just play rhythm guitar. Like, no, I'm fucking Slash. I'm not going to be anybody's rhythm guitar player. Okay, bro, I, I agree with you. So I'm not going to ask you to be in Super Rod. <laughs> but I am going to get... Sounds like a poor I am name. going to get... <laughs> I am going to bring in Stone Gossard from Pearl yes! Jam to be my rhythm guitar player. Absolutely. He just looks like he's, he lives in the pocket. He loves it. He is so awesome. I so mean, great. you know, you've got the lead guitar player in Pearl Jam and he's doing all his things and his gymnastics, but that band to me, because they got a, they got a great bass player too. And that drummer right now, the Soundgarden drummer. Jesus, Matt Cameron. Phenomenal. Yeah. But I do think the success of Pearl Jam is Stone Gossard. I think him and the groove, he is my favorite rhythm guitar player. Shit, that's a good groove right there. I like, you get him and Trujillo going? Yeah, yeah. It's good Killer. I, I, there, okay, now there's another band I wanna see. This is great, I love this idea. This is so great, we're gonna do this every week. 
All right. So rhythm. No one, I, I, no one's going to be shocked that my lead guitar player is going to be Tom Morello. Come on. He's my favorite guitar player. He's my guy. And I know you were really coming from an angle of like, how's everybody meshing and, and stuff. Tom Morello, there's nothing he can't play. And I know that he right. kind of morellifies everything he does. Even right. when we saw him with Bruce. Okay. Jason and I are standing there and we're watching Bruce Springsteen. Okay. And Tom Morello is his guitar player at Jazz oh, Fest. Freaking and he right. can do it. He can play as a band. He doesn't have to be wow, wow, chicka, bow, bow. He can play. Right. He can do anything. He's I my think, guitar player. He's my favorite guitar player. Let's see what's great is you got him and Stone Gossard is just going to sit back and lay down the, the bottom with, with Trujillo. And then you got Tom Morello doing Tom Morello. I think that's a great feel. It's got a nice sound to it already. I could hear it in my head. It's good. I like it. Nobody's going to be surprised that I chose Dave Grohl to be my drummer. <laughs> but that opens up that opens up a lot of opportunities because he can write songs and he can play guitar yes. and he can sing. So that's great. So getting Dave back, as much as I love him as a front man and I love him, of course, he gets a mic. He's talking. He's doing his stage raps. He's swearing. He's talking. The whole thing. He's on. I mean, it, it, I'm telling you. You got, you got to have him. He's got to be mic'd up the whole time, and he's got to be kind of running the show. Um, Dave's fun on drums. Dave's not the best drummer ever. He's a really, really good drummer. He's, he's a great drummer. He's, he's a great excited. drummer. He's excited um, to watch. He's fun. Uh, his fills, the things that he does, he can play in the pocket. He could have done so much more on that Nirvana album. Okay, Dave Grohl is better than Dave Grohl is a thousand times better than okay, but he was playing to the music. He was playing to like a rhythm guitar player. He was not overplaying. Okay, I could have gone out and got the dude that was in Slipknot or whatever, and then I could have got Danny Carey from Tool. Right? No. Dave proved that he's awesome, and if you need him to do anything on that kit, he can. But if he's just got to kick back and do it like he did in Nirvana, he can do that. Fit the song. That's what I was coming at it too. I'm like, how do we fit the songs? How do we yes. get these guys together? And that's 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 good. I like that. That's a great pick. Shit, it's a good band. My lead vocalist. Ooh, I love this. This is why I can't wait to write this one down. Now, of course, it would have been Chris Cornell. All right, yeah, but a, my exercise a, when I delivered this to you, I said. Right. Members must all be alive. Okay. Yeah. It's a shame. Man. And I, I'm just, I'm racking my brains because I, I want to, you know, I, I don't want just somebody that can scream. I don't want, I, I, I'm, I am thinking about a real band here too. So I took this way too serious. Yeah, um, I did too. <laughs> I was close. And I, I would be curious to, to hear some of your runner ups. I'll tell you what my runner up was just because. We know him a little bit here. He's so his, the the Houston market is so big for Shine Down, but Brent from Shine Down has such an unbelievable voice. It's what? almost yeah, he, he, it, he, it's it's almost theatrical he's what great. he does. And he gets better with it too. He, he keeps learning his craft because he's in wicked shape now. They're yeah. doing the the insanity workouts and stuff. You know, he's just at the top of his game. He's a great guy. He can sing anything. Right. And I didn't choose him as my guy. Damn. I chose. Choice, dude. I like that. I chose Miles Kennedy as my lead singer. All right. All right. I like Miles. Good enough. Good. Slash, again, could have anybody he wants. And Slash went out and got Miles Kennedy. Miles Kennedy is also. A threat on the guitar. Now I've got three guitar players in my band. What am I, Blue Oyster Cult? Just a wall of guitars in the front. Um, Miles yeah. Kennedy, I do think that he just has a next level kind of voice. There's nothing that that guy can't do. He is an unbelievable guitar player that nobody talks about because his voice is so great. Um, Slash and the Conspirators, now they're actually saying Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. So he's kind of getting billing with his name in there. Right. The, the stuff that he did for Alter Bridge. I didn't believe in it at first. And I just thought, okay, you know, this guy, he's got a voice, whatever. But after really digging into it and digging into some of that slash stuff now, Miles Kennedy 
is just, he probably has the best voice out there. He's amazing. I've seen him a couple different times and he just delivers the goods and he takes care of himself. He's not out there smoking and drinking. I mean, he's, he's going to have a voice for a long time. So I only see one problem with your band. And that's not a problem. I don't have a problem with your band. Your band's great. I, I want, what, there's, there's, there's Super Rod. It's perfect. Who's going to write your songs besides Dave Grohl? Miles Kennedy isn't writing hits. Dave Grohl's going to have to write all your songs. Stone writes. Tom Morello yeah, writes. Are you kidding true. me? These guys, all, they all write. That's true. They that's all true. write. Miles okay. writes. Miles yeah. Kennedy has a solo career. He has Miles Kennedy. He has a solo career. It's true. He wrote, he wrote in Alter Bridge, and he writes with Slash. All right. I, like, I, I, I want to hear this band. Songs. Dude, I, I, I'm not saying that my band is blowing your band off the stage, but my band is blowing your band off the stage. It's uh, it's good. I want to hear it. You know what I mean? Like, and that's the hard part. Like, I want to hear these who, disasters that we put together. I want to hear them. Who was up there when you were struggling, like for a singer? Who were some of the other guys? I mean, or was it just Eddie? Was that an? What was the hardest position to fill? You know, I went around on the drums for a while, and I was trying to think of a drummer because I got so much shit going on in my band between you know. Eddie Vedder and Matt Bellamy and Flea that I needed someone on drums to just kind of keep it in the pocket and keep it simple. And I think quest yeah, your, do that. your list surprised the hell out of me. I got a bunch of my favorite guys in there. I didn't know. Uh, I wouldn't, I didn't even go down that road. I was like, what could, what, who would I grab to make a band right. that could work and would potentially write some great songs. And <sighs> I actually had Max Weinberg as the drummer, the guy from the E street band. Cause he just sits sure. and plays his three piece and keeps it in the pocket. I think you need a drummer in the band that I got. It just keeps it real. So like you said, with Dave Grohl, though, he knows how to play his role, depending on the song. He fits yep. the song. And I think all the guys you picked know how to do that. I think the guys I picked know how to do that. I think you, where you run into trouble is when you start getting egos and stuff. But I don't think in your band you really would have that problem because they're all so cool dudes. There was a moment, and my band almost became a real band. Dave Grohl on vocals – Tom Morello on guitar, Robert Trujillo on bass, the Chris Cornell tribute show, the one that went down at the Forum, mm -hmm. uh, no, the, the LA Coliseum. So I don't know. I asked Vicky Cornell if this is ever going to be put out. She says that's that's the goal. Okay, uh, when I interviewed uh, Chris's widow, that show, I've heard from people that have been there. And they just said it was the most magical thing you ever saw. And I'll throw a name out there. Miley Cyrus blew everybody away. I brought it up to Vicky Cornell. I said, what the hell is Miley Cyrus doing up there on stage singing Temple of the Dog? What does she know about any of this? They bring her out. Hey, everybody, it's Miley Cyrus. <laughs> she gets done singing Say Hello to Heaven. And the place erupts, dude. Yeah, it was amazing. Sing. She can so, sing. There was a time when those th my three guys, they're up there jamming, and I want to say Rage Drummer is back there, and maybe somebody else was jangling around. Um, but Dave was singing, and, uh, and it was pretty badass, man. I don't know, because this is a business, and nobody likes to think of it as a business, like, dude, you had you were rolling cameras, man. Put out the DVD. Let's go. I'll buy it. Put it's it on approvals. put it on a streaming network. Yeah. You got to get everybody to sign off. And I don't know that they, you know, I don't know that it was one of those, okay, if you walk in, sign this, and we might put this out there. Well, then nobody's getting on, nobody's getting on stage. Right. So even if every penny goes to Chris's pet charity and stuff, I don't know if they can get all of those musicians to sign off on everything. But we need to see that performance. But yeah, my three guys, they jammed together. It Damn, was wild, crazy. man. It was wild. And that's what, when I talked about this exercise, I'm like, damn it. I, if, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to deviate from those three guys. You know what I would love to hear back from if anyone is, um, I don't even know what you call it, a producer, a record producer, a, uh, someone in the music business to like go, hey, yeah, your picks are actually pretty cool. That would be an awesome band. Here's what it might sound like. Like there's people out there, musicologists, or I can't think of the right word, but someone to go, hey, that would be a pretty freaking cool band. I, I, that would be interesting. 
and to see what they think about like, well, no, that would never work. And here's why, you know, and I'm sure there'd be headbutting in my band and there'd be all kinds of weird shit going on because of egos and you gotta, you know, you gotta put it in that. If you're going to try and pull this off, you've got to deal with all that horse shit because you've got managers and you've got all the things that go with it. But I want to hear both of these bands. I think it would be pretty damn interesting, but uh, I don't know any of these guys really well enough to make them do it. <laughs> well, you know what? The next time Tom Morello plays in New Orleans, we'll go stalk him at the dungeon and then we'll just kind of wait for him to show up, carry this list, put it in your wallet. And then the next time we hear about Morello in New Orleans, you know, he's going to go to the dungeon oh, and yeah. then we'll just whip out our list and say, okay, bro, here's the deal, man. Let's run this. Cause he's a, he's a, he's a music geek rock fan too. So he would love to have this little exercise. He would love to talk about it. He'll tell us exactly. Okay. This is why this one would work. And this is why this wouldn't work. That's what I'm saying. Like this, this presentation would be cool to throw into musicians and go, Hey, what do you think about this super group idea? I think, I think there's, this is a great exercise. And, and hopefully people listening are, are going to start scratching around, do a little Googling and, uh, and start putting together your own band because then you start to hear it, you know, you start hearing, okay, well, you know, my guitar player sounds like this. And then you go, okay, well, if I put my drummer with that, that's going to sound like this, right? And, you know, you start creating this crazy, never gonna happen. This is just piss it into the wind exercise, but it was a lot of fun, and I spent a lot more time on this than I probably ever should have, man. I wanted Slash in my band, but again, I did not want to put Slash on rhythm guitar, or I didn't want to, like, I wanted to respect the exercise, because I told you specifically, right. rhythm right. guitar or keys, okay? Right. There's, you know, someone's got to be the support, and someone's got to be the guy, you know? So, I, you know, Ronnie Wood, I was thinking, you know, who's a better rhythm guitar player than Ronnie Wood, right? Um but yeah, Stone Gossard, he's just in the pocket. He's awesome. I, I, I just watch him play the whole time when I'm watching Pearl Jam. You know what? You're vocalist. I mean, I love Pearl Jam. Do I? I don't, do, am I just saying that? I've grown to like them more over the years. Do I love yeah. Pearl Jam's? Do I love Pearl Jam's first album with yeah. all my heart? Every single song. Do I Absolutely. think? Do I put it up there with with Appetite and you know some of the greatest? debut CDs of all time. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Everything after that, it becomes a little wallpapery to me with a few things here and there that I like. And, and Eddie's vocals are one of the reasons I felt like he just stopped enunciating. <laughs> I felt like the band, yeah. I felt like the band stopped um, being a slave to verse, chorus, verse. The songs were just kind of, and I get it, it's Pearl Jam. The, the, the songs were just the structure of them. But then a couple of years ago, they came out with Sirens. Yeah. And massive. that song is beautiful. Yeah. And that song, I'm like, okay, that's why, that's why Pearl Jam's great. That's yeah. why they're amazing. Um, and they deliver Sirens. those nuggets on every album. There's always that one or two songs that you're yes. like, fuck, that's a great song. But it's not, yeah, they're not a hit machine. And I think, you know what, you might get to a point where you're like, who gives a shit? I'm going to do what I want to do now. I don't need to have a hit. I don't have to have a song on the radio. I'm going to keep doing my thing. Yeah, the singer thing, I kind of I kind of just picked Eddie Vedder and I never looked at anyone else. I got to be honest. That Brent Smith would have been a great one because he can sing so much shit. Brent is so he great. He would have been dude. a great one. I mean, there's a million singers. That, that's hard, man, you know, to put that. But you need someone who can write good lyrics. I don't want to hear songs about somebody's dick. <laughs> I don't want to hear, I don't want Paul Stanley write my lyrics. You know what I mean? I love Paul, but Jesus, I don't need Love Gun and and, and all the same old shit. I want good oh, dude, you could have got the singer from Jackal. She loves my cock, loves my cock, right? Wasn't that Jesse James Dupree? Jesse James Jackal. A lot of people might not know Jackal, but Jackal is this band in the early '90s who just yeah, was a yeah, yeah. fucking disaster of a band. <laughs> but they had hits like Lumberjack, where he play a chainsaw. chainsaw. <laughs> and he'd play the chainsaw in the song. He'd always chop up bar stools on stage. That was the shtick. And he was actually a really, well, he still is, cool guy. At times we met him. And they had a huge hit on the home of rock and roll in Buffalo, New York, the, the Fox. And yeah. it was the Lumberjack song. And they had other songs that we were playing too. But they got, the program director got them to play a special show for us. And we aired it live. And on, on, their, one, on their one album, they had... <laughs> <laughs> they had the song the called song. she loves my cock she loves my cock loves my cock and then I think it's they a even pretty the simple song yeah so the boss said the program director goes 
hey, listen, we want you to obviously do that song because it's obviously a crowd favorite, but please, please, you can't say cock on the radio and we're going to broadcast this live. And he said, well, you change it because the station was called 103.3 The Fox. So can you say, instead of cock, say she loves the fox? Oh yeah, sure, I can do that. Yeah, no, no problem. I oh, got it. Yeah, we can do that. And weren't you running the board in the no. studio? This, you're, so- Somebody your story is running your it. story is accurate. The story that I'm running the band is the jackasses in the band Cracker. Ah, yeah, yeah, they fucked it up too far. And Cracker is the one that started swearing on stage, and I'm running the board. And the guy, the the program director, calls me up on the hotline. He's like, "Aren't you listening to this? You know, because they're doing, you know, um, be with you, babe, like being low, yeah, oh, low." low. low. And they're closing with that. And this guy is just swearing, swearing, swearing during this song. And same radio station. I'm just, Jason and I are the absolute pond scum of this radio station. We're at the bear. We're just trying to work our way in to try to get into the cool station. And I'm thinking my career is over. This guy's swearing on the air. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? If I turn it off, what do I put on? There was no contingency. They just put me in there. Right. Hotline. Horny Bob calls. He's our program director. Bob Richards, the meanest fucking guy on the planet. Mean. He liked Jason. He hated me. He was mean <laughs> shit. Calls me on the hotline. He's like, aren't you listening to this? Get it off the goddamn air. Blah, blah, blah. He's screaming at me. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? So he tells me, grab a CD and take it off the air. And he's like, get in my office. I'll see you there at noon tomorrow. I'm like, my career is over, man. My career is over. So, I, so Jackal had a similar situation, but I'm running the board for Cracker. Uh, okay. And that's so where I thought my career was over before it even got started. Well, whoever was running the board <laughs> had the same situation because he was- Why would you run a live concert of a band? Ever. Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 it was cool. It's out of the box, but you can't expect these bands to not swear. No, they've been drinking on stage. So anyway, that's Jackal. And, and, and yeah, they end up getting cock on the air about 10 times before it was pulled off. And I remember that. Yeah, like every, I mean, problem. the chorus is she loves my cock. And maybe every other one was Fox and then Cox. It's like, they, you know, he tried. He tried. But you're that, not reminds me, that. that reminds me when we saw, uh, we saw Kid Rock at Jazz Fest. And he said he wasn't going to swear because it was Mother's Day. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> and he yeah. said, I'm going to try. And he knew there were kids in the audience. I mean, Kid Rock, he really is. I, I, I know that people probably think he's douchey. He's so cool. He is so freaking cool. He'd be a great guy. He'd be an awesome singer for a super group. He would be yeah. awesome to be in a band because he can kind of sing still. He can still hit notes. And he play can all the sing instruments. Boozy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, he would be a great singer. That um, would actually work. Yeah. But he was, I think he he let a couple of cuss words go and he said, I'm sorry, I know it's Mother's Day and blah, blah, blah. And he did a really, really good job during his set to try and not swear. But I appreciated the fact that he just said he was going to try because of the moms out there with the kids. When you're rolling 100 miles an hour on stage and you're city after city after city and then someone yep. says, don't swear, you're like, you, you forgot that the second you stepped foot on stage. Well, right, we got to wrap this shit up. That's enough of this crap. Yeah. I want to I wanna talk more about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but we're not going to do that. Uh, um, I, I want to skip final thoughts this week, unless you got something really mind blowing. No, you said you had uh, maybe some listener feedback or some, some people that were well, hitting us up. People have been, please, please leave your comments and, you know, rip us a new ass. We don't care, man. It's like, you know, not, we're all here to learn. You know, it, it, our exercises with the, with making your own super group, it's, it's just literally that it's just something to talk about. It's something to, fun to do. It's a great exercise. Um, do it at home and let us know your results uh, at Play Pants Pod on all the social media channels. So and I went around and I looked. Let's do this exercise like on our Facebook and stuff. We'll have, we want to hear what you guys, who did we miss? I mean, there's probably somebody, oh, if familiar. you're listening right now and you're just, you're, you're, you're ready to, to punch the computer screen because you're watching us on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast and you're punching the air because you're listening to us. Like you idiots, how could you forget this person? Like, I would love to see your lists, your super group, and the same rules apply. They have to be alive and come at it at any angle you want. Jason had a different angle than me, but we both kind of had the same thought of everybody kind of working together, like as a real super group. I, you know, I just could, I could have had slash 
and Tom Morello up there, but who's rhythm guitar player, you know? That's, that's hard, that's hard. So it, yeah. It, and tear ours apart. Like if you're like, no, 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 don't, you know, don't be using Eddie Vedder with that great band you've got together, Ginty. Put this guy in. You forgot about this guy. It's, oh, maybe that's a better band too. You know what I mean? Like, like add in, make, who would take somebody out, put somebody else in, whatever you want to do. I don't really care, but I'll put some shit. I'll get uh, our producer, Jake Fisher, to put all that stuff up for us and, and get some stuff going on. A um, couple of listener comments. Uh, this is just a comment, okay. right? I want to throw it out there. It actually was kind of an interesting, it, it crossed my mind for a second. Um, I don't know who said it, but they said, we need a Netflix series of you two coming up in your careers on the radio world, a Netflix mm -hmm. series on our story. Well, look, we only told you about 9% of our whole fucking story. Our story has got a lot of layers to it. <laughs> and I don't want to get into a lot of it for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> if you go listen um, to our first episode, geez. it explains everything. Our first two episodes really kind of goes into the backstory of how we met and everything. Um, he thinks it'd be a cool Netflix series. You know what? I thought about it. There's some interesting yeah. shit in there. <laughs> There's, you know, the radio station as a backdrop, it hasn't been used enough. The go-to is always a TV station for some sort of a, for some sort of a, a comedy or whatever. Now, of course, famously WKRP in Cincinnati Frazier. and then news radio, Frasier. Right. But it's, the ratio is 10 to one movies and television and any kind of entertainment tv over radio the radio backdrop i don't know if they just think that people won't get like the inner workings or something but i i, I do think and i know we're nerdy we would we would totally be into it but i think the the radio backdrop could be used for something and i think if you used the music think about when we came up we came up when grunge was just getting going too i mean you, you follow us you take the music route you could do a lot and I, I, it'll never happen but I'm just saying, if there's someone who's a producer out there, hey, look at us. We can do this. So, yeah, I don't know if our story would be all that great. But I did want to tell you, though, um, I've had a couple of emails going back and forth. I answered a tweet that was just kind of thrown out to the world about Woodstock 99. If you were there, they wanted to hear your story, what it was like for you, what you saw. So I sent, I, I tweeted, and then I sent an email. They got back to me. They, they asked for more information, and that's it. I haven't heard any more, but that would be a huge thing for me. I would love to be in a documentary, and I've told them, I'm like, I, I got stories. I'll tell you whatever you want to know, because um, I vividly remember a lot about that, being at that show and broadcasting from it. So, In 99, the wasn't that the one with, like, the, the, the fires? and the, It was just a yes. shit show, wasn't it? It was a disaster? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got out of there. We left Sunday night. The place was on fire. It was ridiculous. It was like mm. Lord of the Flies, um, you know, yeah. gangs of New York and warriors all together, all in one. What's the matter? The cunning juice got your lips sealed shut. <laughs> uh, another question I got was, why don't you guys play any music on the podcast? You guys are DJs. It would be great to hear you guys play songs that you're talking about. Rod, you want to take this? Ooh. Yeah. So uh, licensing is a whole different thing with a podcast. Radio stations pay, and there's a lot of money that exchanges hands, not to play records, but royalty fees mm -hmm. are and there's a lot of payment as we always say the music industry is a business people don't like to think of it as that but it is and that we would never be able to afford even playing 30 seconds of one song one, song one time would bankrupt us so yeah. we cannot play any music we can talk uh i can sing some of the songs if you want no no we don't uh, want that you know if you want a little of that i can kind of get into that for you but uh we cannot play music on this absolutely not at least not oh and i got a, I got, i've actually gotten this one a few times how can i get a play pants t-shirt <laughs> How can I get a play? Uh, we don't have any. Uh, if, don't you think I'd be wearing one right now? Because it'd be my newest shirt I ever I had. Um, okay, I'm gonna get on that. Seriously, I I, I am gonna I'm I'm gonna get on that play pants t-shirt. I mean, I got a guy. All right. Well, I just I got a guy over here. And then uh, I actually Rod, we got a uh, inquiry, and I don't think it's real, but I wanted to throw it at you. There's a uh, no budget, but I have a guy. We, we've got a, uh, a client that wants to advertise with us. They're called Smooth My Balls. <laughs> oh, my balls are pretty smooth, but listen, they could always be smoother. 
too. They can always be smoother. So um, is this like one of those, hey, we want to, you know, they just kind of blindly send out, yes. oh, there's a podcast out there. There's like, yeah. there's like blood in the water. Correct. It's, it's, it's like if you talk about it and you sell some of these things that smooth your nuts, uh, then you get a portion of it. So no, 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 no. You, you got to pay to play, baby. I, we're not doing that shit. But, but this, th maybe they did take a look and they say, that ball guy, that's the influencer that we're looking for. I always make jokes about influencers. Like that's a job now. I mean, right. girls on Instagram, if you have – hundred thousand. If you have a, if you have titties, <laughs> but if you have a hundred thousand followers, you can monetize that. You can kind of live off of that. You're not rich. You're not rich. If you have a million followers, you can monetize that, and that's now your job. Yep. But I still, I, I think there are girls living off of a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Meaning, fit t. Look at what I look at the titty cream. The things I whiten my teeth with. I think that sweet spot is hitting 100,000. We got a ways to go. And follow us at Play Pants Pod, by the way, so we can get 100,000. So I can get some of that titty cream. I want to rub that shit on. I want to see what it feels like. <laughs> He's going to rub the titty cream on his teeth. They're going to turn purple. Just be sitting here <laughs> rubbing cream on my titties. Wait, why would it turn purple? Well, this is awesome. I, I appreciate all you guys. Uh, the feedback is great. I cannot wait to see uh, people oh. put their list together of their ultimate band i thought that was a great exercise today that was fun. um but thank you guys so much for checking this out um still having fun doing it even though i quit every week i don't think i really seriously quit this week no i don't think i did no it's good it's good uh we'll keep you we'll keep you on the on the employment uh uh if i find roster. out that you are in this room with those rock and roll hall of fame fucks if i find out that you're in on this then i might quit though th there's not a more infuriating group out there it okay. is frustrating. That, that, to me, that's a hate group. The people that are in, in that room, that's a hate group. You know I don't like those people. You know who's on it? And, and I don't know if you've talked to him. Uh, Eddie, uh, who's the guy that does uh, Eddie Trunk. Used to do that metal show on VH1. He's got the- He the... is a voter. He's not, he's not on he's the nominating voter, committee. But he's one of the 600 that are the voters. So he gets the ballot. And I, so, yeah. I mean, that's not, maybe you could talk to someone like that who's, um, yeah, the nominating committee, it's- it's that's a, a whole separate thing. That's where, that's where the sausage is made, and they don't want you to see that. What is the most unrock and roll thing in the world? A suit. There's your problem. There's your problem. It's suits in that room. Suits are in the room. That's not rock and roll. Rock and roll is Johnny Cash with that middle finger up. You've seen the picture. That's fucking rock and roll, man. That that picture oh, yeah, the, sums it up. That's fucking rock and roll, man. Is that it's the attitude in prison? I don't, I don't know, know what that's from, man. I don't I know what that's from. Wholesome. It's a great picture. That's rock and roll. And it's Johnny Cash. Thank He's not even a rock and roll guy. Thank you for bringing that around. Thanks. Uh, now you're all pissed off. You're never going to go to sleep tonight. Sorry. I'll be good. I'll be good. I, Johnny Cash has got me off the ledge. That's good. We can't just, we can't leave on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Let's go. It's time. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. See us on our YouTube channel. And follow our social media pages at Play Pants Pod.